Freddie Fishknecht, Heidelberg University Hospital. Imaging malaria transmission. Good morning. It's my pleasure to present you the work we've been doing in our lab. We're mostly interested in the malaria parasite. And that parasite causes malarial disease when it replicates in red blood cells and it can grow to up to half a kilogram of parasitic mass in some unfortunate uh, patients. Right? Most of us would die much, much earlier with much lower numbers of parasites. However, what is quite interesting is that when the mosquito transmits malaria, both, on both points when the mosquito takes up the parasite and when it spits it back into our bodies, actually just one to ten parasites are enough to cause an infection. And it's this stage of the parasite highlighted in, on, on the right side in the uh, red rectangle that my lab is mostly interested in. In order to study this, uh, we make use of a rodent malaria model system that allows us to very easily transfect parasite and generate transgenic parasite lines. So for example, we have here a mosquito that is infected with a parasite expressing gr the green fluorescent protein. And each of these green dots corresponds to uh, a cyst into which one parasite replicates into thousands of progeny parasites. And we can visualize this process by tagging, for example, a parasite protein on the surface of the parasite with a GFP. So you can see here half-formed parasites uh, inside a cyst. And we can then also film how these uh, parasites are bursting out from the cyst. The cyst on the left, you can see. This is very reminiscent of um, the process of sporulation, hence these parasite forms are called sporozoids adaptively. They float around the mosquito body cavity until they attach to and invade the mosquito salivary glands. You can see, kind of can see here, um, and you can take out these salivary glands and this mosquito, there's about 5,000 parasites sitting into the salivary gland. And when you isolate the parasites, again, they do something extremely curious, the slightly curved cells. And when you put them in the right type of medium and uh, on a flat surface, they move in circles, which is very convenient for a microscopist to analyze them. But they move at a remarkable speed of one to three micrometers a second, which is really one of the fastest cells there are uh, in, in biology. And why that is so important, we're uh, studying the processes that underlie this motility, I'll show you in the next slide. So you can see here, um, proboscis, it's the part of the mosquito that's <coughs> that is sticking in your skin, and the mosquito is salivating these parasites. Now, when you don't let it salivate just onto your microscope, but you let it bite a mouse, and then you put the mouse in the microscope, you can luckily see um, parasites that are moving in the skin. So the parasites are not transmitted in the blood, as Walt Disney thought, but they're transmitted like, you know, uh, the pathogens transmitted here by ticks, into the skin. They move at this incredible speed, about 10 times faster, as the cells of the immune system that try and catch it. And if you look at the guy here highlighted, it then eventually invades into blood cell, into the blood circulatory. And with this, I'd like to thank everybody both. Thank you.